This is Twit. You know, tests are nice, but what? But if you knew fever, if you knew temperatures, you'd know. We wouldn't know what the disease is, but you'd see. <clears throat> and this map does show abnormal or atypical temperature increases. So if I click the atypical button on this, uh, you can see there's some hot spots here, like Weld County, Colorado, and much of Florida. Florida is unbelievable. And look where it is. It's on the beach, right? Well, that's not much of a surprise right after spring break. You can also look at Louisiana, and you can see that, you know, uh, there's going to— so Everybody's worried. There, there's going to be problems there. Why Colorado? Um, Denver? I don't know. Um, I don't know. So, but that's, that's what's interesting. Maybe it's just a high percentage. See, that's what's interesting is this is data that isn't related to testing or even hospital. This is, this is you know, you could see Is this Kinza? This is Kinza. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's any fevers. So that's right. normal flu, COVID, strep. <laughs> right. But they also, they know what's typical because they've been doing right. this for some time. And they know Six what's atypical. Now. So, you know, it, yeah, we are having a particularly bad flu season, so that's somewhat of uh, the issue. But What I, is the brown in California and it Washington? It's, uh, mean? it's good. It's normal. It's not, uh, oh. yeah. And so... Uh, well, they, they're always feverish in the West Coast. Uh, it's actually uh, less illness in, uh, in our county. And that, uh, to oh. me, I feel like this is because in California we sheltered in place early. But I don't know. I mean, I'm not a scientist, so I, you know... I don't know what how you interpret it, but well, I go, think. Do me a favor, go back to it for for New York versus New Jersey. That was interesting. Um, let's, uh, can you can you? Um, I could zoom in. I think. zoom it. Yeah. And this is where hmm. not having a good geography. There's Queens, which is a hot spot, and of course Manhattan. Um, here's Hudson County, New Jersey. Bergen County. These are all Bergen hot County's spots. been our hot spot. Yeah. yeah. And so that's Manhattan. And so you could see Manhattan is... Uh, I'm in Somerset County. Can you go west a little bit? Essex. A little west more. more. Now down, down a little bit. No, no, right there. Somerset. Yeah, it's so a little it's bit of a hot of spot. Yeah. yeah. The trend, <sighs> My wife the trend is, though, look store. at this. The illness trend decreased by 4.43%. So you're high, but it's decreased. It used to be worse. Used to be worse. I think what you're seeing a little bit in this is the shelter-in-place stuff working, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I don't know. I, th th I mean, look, I, I'll leave it to uh, somebody with better brains than me to interpret it. But I think what's interesting is that this exists. Uh, it's been around for some years. Um, what if it is being driven by a bunch of people who are worried about COVID coming in and taking their temperature when they feel bad? That's right fine. Now. Because well, if, no, if I'm just saying sick, the comps may be different because... Right. Well, that's why you need to have lots of them. You have to have right. lots of them, right? And you also need... We need laws that say you can't get fired because you, your temperature was high. You can't lose your insurance because your temperature was high. We've got to protect people in those ways. Right. Well, the challenge with that is people will continue to find new ways to infer and make insights from this data. So do you write laws that try to get ahead of each one of those actions before or after they start like doing the database redlining, for lack of a better term? Or do you create guardrails around how the data can be used in the first place? I, I, think, I, I think, Stacey, you, you, you build with principles. Rather than trying to anticipate every possible use of the data or hold it, you say there are principles. And the principles are that, you know, uh, I think that sickness should be um, freedom of, of keeping your job and not losing your insurance from illness should just be a principle. And wherever the, the threat comes from, uh, then you're, you're in a better position because you set that principle as a matter of law. Okay. I would also... Do we have I'll, so I'll much agreement. This. <laughs> I, yeah. I wrote about this okay. last week, and I'm going to ask you to to highlight it because it ties to what we're talking about. Um, and this is, if you go to my site, Leo, it's, and now is the time to build a connected medical device framework. The reason is because some people I really respect, they wrote an article in Nature. And in that article, they talk about creating a five-level framework for remote monitoring um, there, oh, there's, there's Here's Kevin writing about, about Kinza. Kinza. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I agree sorry, with you a hundred, a hundred percent. 
I think that that wow. is this <clears throat> is the opportunity right now. I'm <laughs> subscribing this... already. It's okay. I subscribe. That drop down. I, I, know. <clears throat> I, I know. Andrew makes me keep it. Um, scroll <laughs> down just a little bit <laughs> because works. part of this is they have a connected sensor fax. Uh, what is so that this would be something. Like a nutrition level. This would be something you would see on on your device to know how yeah, valid it is. And they're calling for so, they're calling for this five things. So validation. So are there peer reviewed papers and clinical trials for each device saying, hey, they're measuring the right thing to like diagnose disease? The next level of the framework is security practices. Is this device secure? The next is data rights and governance. So who gets your data? Is that clear to people? Mm. Blah blah blah. The final two, usability and utility. Oh, this, this is, is important for like, can like somebody who's not technically savvy even use this, right? right? Does your doctor need to be doing, you know, support calls? And then price, how does it, price is really fun because depending on who pays for it, the value really can can go either way, right? So you might have insurance companies' interests ahead of a consumer's interest in this case, but the point is, like, show people exactly what this looks like. So and you I got this from an article in Nature. Is this being proposed? So this is, the FDA on Friday basically said that they're going to allow remote monitoring, but it has none of this in none of these yeah, safeguards in place. Yeah, this is and so it's a proposal by a group of people, some of whom have worked for the FDA, some of who are very good security experts, very well respected. So this is a proposal. The article is so long, you guys. I know my article's long, but the nature article is incredibly long. But it's really excellent and it's how we should be thinking about this. So I, I encourage people to weigh in on this because I think it's it's crucial. Oh, there it is. Ta-da! Yeah, I would really love to see this. Uh, in fact, this makes so much sense. I feel like it's never going to happen. But it's just so obvious, right? It's such a great idea. Well, and it, it's not just a great idea. It's really necessary for us to build trust in this kind of system because you have a lot of people, you're asking them to give data that is deeply personal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Jeff may have gone on the air talking about AFib, but if he didn't want to, it's not like right. he'd feel comfortable mm -hmm. with and that we have data. These kind of labels on food. Yeah. Wouldn't, so much it makes perfect sense to have it on medical devices. You know, connected medical devices, especially. 